What is evidence-based clinical practice? Fundamentally, it's a skill set to ask and answer clinical questions you encounter during your daily practice. There are a number of steps represented here, but we're only going to focus on the first two. As always in evidence-based clinical practice, our story starts with a patient. Here she is. She's a middle-aged female who's presenting to your emergency department with leg swelling and pain. And ultimately, her diagnosis is really no mystery to you. She recently traveled to Hawaii, she's on oral contraceptives, she smokes, and she has a leg that looks like this. You do a couple of tests and you find out she has an acute DVT completely occluding the common femoral vein. Well, maybe you've seen a patient like this, or maybe you haven't, but undoubtedly you could come up with a number of questions about her and her condition. Is unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin a better treatment? What's the mortality for patients like this? What's the chance she'll go on to develop a PE? What's the chance she'll go on to develop post-thrombotic syndrome? Is ED bedside ultrasound as good as venous duplex in the lab for diagnosing DVT? Will catheter-directed TPA prevent post-thrombotic syndrome? The questions are essentially endless, but all share some very common characteristics. The first common characteristic of a good clinical question is the structure. All clinical questions define a patient or population of interest. All specify an intervention or exposure. Some will define a comparison group, and all define a target outcome. Looking at that last question we posed, will catheter-directed TPA prevent post-thrombotic syndrome? You can see the population is patients with DVT. The intervention is catheter-directed thrombolysis. The comparison would be standard therapy, and the outcome is post-thrombotic syndrome. The second common characteristic is that these clinical questions fall into five general types. Therapy, harm, differential diagnosis, diagnosis, and prognosis. What we have asked with our catheter-directed TPA question is a therapy question, and these questions are generally best answered by randomized control trials or meta-analyses of randomized control trials. We could have looked at harm by asking, in patients with DVT, what's the rate of significant bleeding with low molecular weight heparin? This type of question is usually answered by a cohort study or a case-controlled series. We could have asked a differential diagnosis question by asking, with patients presenting with leg swelling and pain with recent travel, what's the incidence of DVT? These questions are also usually answered by cohort studies. An example of a diagnosis question would be, in patients with leg swelling, What's the ability of ED bedside ultrasound to establish the diagnosis of DVT? These questions are answered through a controlled trial where patient receives the new target test and also a gold standard test. And finally, a prognosis question would be, in patients with DVT, what's the incidence of post-thrombotic syndrome or recurrent DVT or PE? Prognosis questions are also answered by cohort studies or case control series. Putting the time into organizing your question in the PICO format, knowing the type of question, knowing how to ask the question and what type of answer to look for will ultimately make your search strategy more efficient. Now undoubtedly these type of questions rise each shift, but just as likely as they are to come up in a shift, they are just as likely to slip from your mind. We'll look at some resources for searching for answers while on your shift, but one way to help remember those questions would be to write them down in the Notes app of your smartphone or use a program like Evernote. When you find the time later, you can reference back to them and search for your answers.